All right, guys, here we are back with the OBS truck. This video, we're gonna take the hood and the roof and uh, knock down this old decaying clear coat, fix a few little, bam, get her shut dents in the front of it, hopefully not find a whole bunch of hail damage in these parts and uh, try to get body work done and epoxy primer and then we'll high build the areas that we need so when it comes paint time all we got to do is go back in and do a light sand over that epoxy and we got our surfaces prepped you know this truck has been uh, around here for a minute just because uh, people aren't in a hurry and if you're not in a hurry hog shooters probably not going to be in a big hurry either so you all sit back Get your favorite beverage, whatever you want to do, and uh, enjoy. We're going to knock this thing out. Oh, and by the way, hey, we're going to try this video in 4K and see, uh, see how much time it takes to edit it if it's something that I want to switch over to doing and what it looks like. I want to make the best videos for you guys, so let's get after it. So tools are going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to start out with 80 grit DA paper, like six inch sticky back DA paper. You know, I'm in the process as I run out of stuff. Um, I'm going to start transitioning to Velcro paper just because uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it, you're, it's reusable for a long time. The sticky back stuff, once you tear it off, it's pretty much trash. Um, but we're going to use 80 grit on our DA. I've got a uh, my safety gear out for this deal, I'm just going to use a pair of leather gloves and I'm going to put a dust mask on because, hey, it's going to get dusty, guys. And we're going to do this thing out here outside, try to keep it in the shade in the carport because uh, it's supposed to be a hot one in Oklahoma today, fellas, and we want to stay cool. So, uh, yeah, let's start sanding. Oh, we gotta turn the air on, son of a gun. Woohoo, there we go. So, yep, here it is, fellas. So that's probably as much sanding as anybody wants to watch. Um, you did see, like I'm just trying to take the clear coat off. You see it in there all chalky. You noticed with the camera up close that uh, it just almost peels it right away. And then as soon as you bump the green, you're down to this factory sealer. Under the factory sealer is a, uh, a high quality primer down there. And since this is not peeling, there's no other signs of damage to that primer. 
we want to try to leave that you know a lot of people might go in and try to strip this down to bare metal and then you got to put something on it that's going to stick good in the factory they spend a lot of money on that stuff um you you might be tempted to leave some of that clear on where it doesn't look so bad every time i've done that i've always had a line where i stopped show up like months down the line so we'll make sure we get all the clear off of it we're using 80 grit right now i'm going to switch up to uh 180 just to refine the scratches and make it easier to feel feel dents and dings in this i don't think that it's all beat up i did notice a spot back here that definitely shows as a dent and you know like i said earlier it's got all of the slam dents in the front of it not a big deal though guys we're going to get her done so that's the coarse sand on everything most all that clear is knocked down with 80 grit i didn't worry about masking stuff off because i stayed away from all of the trim a little bit but this is what dents show up like when you start da and over stuff and you can see they're not bad, but they shoot. They sure did show up, and uh, we're going to have to fix these. I didn't really see any damage in the rest of the roof that was big like this, so that's a good thing. And being on the back, that's an easy area for you to stand and work. So, uh, yeah, we're about a little less than an hour in. This took two sheets of 80 grit sandpaper. You guys just have to be willing to. Oh crap, Bobby, I think we're turning into the Hulk. Yeah, look at, uh, this is progress, right? Right before lunch. So I got about two, and a, two hours and 15 minutes in this right now, maybe a little bit more. Um, you can see holding that DA flat, the paint stays in your little dents and dings for you. So that's not bad, you know? five or six dents on the hood mostly right up here at the front one back there one over here and then about a half dozen in the roof to take care of and we got this door here this door's got some damages back here to take care of and one somewhere right here uh going along here i did put some filler back here in these dents after I did a little hammer and dolly work, I got my lowest spots uh, cleaned up down to bare metal stud gun here. So uh, we can take this thing and get it in here. Push that dude in. Yeah, all the way. Oh, and it doesn't want to make a good connection. There we go yeah so weld the stud on we'll just take that and use a slide hammer on it real quick so pull it a little it's got kind of a slight bit of distortion at the top of it there get that out of the way make sure we're pulled out throw us a second stud up on there now these things are just little they look almost like copper nails they're just copper plated <laughs> Well, I hope uh, this time is the charm. Third time, right? Usually good. This wouldn't be a proper video without a little body filler mixing, would it? Spreading some mud, putting some icing on it, giving it the glass. Yeah, whatever you call it. Mix it up good no matter what kind of body filler you're using or product fiberglass 
plastic repair material, no streaks. Whew, we put a lot of hardener in it. It's hot out here today. All right, she's mixed. And all I'm trying to do is just give, all I'm trying to do here is give this little spot over here its last little final bit of filling. Usually I can get this in two, two applications and we're good. This was being ornery and it took three. It's kind of a bigger spot. Roof skin's just kind of flimsy on the old truck. I just try to wipe it on there and you know, you can help yourself out by feathering that edge out a little bit. Maybe throw us a little bit over this. Make sure we don't have no pinholes in that bad boy. Yeah, and it's pretty hot out here today because just that little bit of mixing and uh, body filler is hard, which is cool. I mean, we don't have to wait very long. Yeah, you don't want to be wiping that. That'd be bad juju. Quit playing with it. That's when you usually mess up, you know. Sun's in the other side of the deal now. Yeah, we're on the downhill swing. Anyway, we got all our body work is good to go. Everything's finished out with 180. Now we go, uh, yeah, with your hand, a little piece of sandpaper and sand over the corners. And what we'll do is we'll tape right on that corner for our primer so that when we're sanding for our paint job, we can sand our primer line out by just sanding that corner right there. And uh, yeah, that's the way that's done. But I'm trying to just make sure and be diligent about getting all that old clear coat off of every bit of this. And just that little piece of 180, it'll knock it out pretty quick for you. Yeah, need to put some tape on this molding before I start sanding up close to it. We did a good job with that DA, bro. We got almost everything knocked down. So we got the roof done, the hood's done, this door's done. Um, oh yeah, and I did, I fixed a little spot on the back of the cab. Um, you only see like none of that because it's got a toolbox in the bed but I couldn't not fix a dent in it and paint it. Woo, more fun for you fellas. Just a bunch of sanding going on. Just about finished up, ready to start masking for primer. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you can see here, we're using a lot of two inch tape. I slid it underneath the corner there so no overspray can get on our glass and then uh, I stick it on that edge and I'll set it like this and then we're going to shut the door and we're going to peel that back and stick it to the top of the door and no overspray will go further than what our tape edge is right there. You can kind of push down really hard on it and it'll peel back to where you touch hard. So works to give you a softer line and seal the jams up without having to do a bunch of papering and stuff. And everybody hates primer overspray in their jam. So that's the tech tip for this part. All right, so next tip, a little bit of 320 grit past where you finish feathering. I actually want my sand scratches to go underneath my masking. So I know any primer that I'm gonna get on, this part is gonna have good scratches for good adhesion using that method, you don't end up with lines later in your paint. And what else? Using the proper grit, like 320 here at the edge of 180, will keep us from fighting sand scratches later on in our paint process here. And this truck, it's not like a restoration job where you would strip it all down to bare metal you fully prime the whole thing and all that jazz. This is just more like just a good, honest repaint of a vehicle, fixing the worst 
which was the rust on this. It did have some hail dents and a lot more in this roof than I really expected. Hard to see it when that uh, clear coat's all peeled off. Hard to tell what exactly it looks like. I would suggest getting it wet or something so you can see a little shine on there. Yeah, that way you can find all the little dents and dings. But, yep. So this side, we're just going to back tape. Here, I'll show you what that looks like. So I just take this, and I'm not going to prime down that far. I just want to catch all of the, where I sand it through to the sealer on it. I guess that's what I want to say there. And what we'll do is once we get this in where we're going to paint it, or prime it, we'll cover it all up with plastic back there. And we also have that foam tape that we hate so much. We can put that in there to create a soft edge too. All right, here's you an example of some back taping around the hood. Same deal as on those doors. Get this thing back, covered up with a sheet of plastic. I did come in below this lip because of some corrosion from good old bug screws, bug shield screws. Yeah, like if I could talk. So I'm gonna get this thing shut down. Tape, tape down. I'm about down to just the driver's area here. Well, all right, guys. I'm sorry that I hadn't, I don't even think I pushed the record button while I was in here doing too much of this taping, but hey, here we are. We've got it all stuck down and it is plasticed off good, so we're not going to overspray too much stuff. I was going to try to cover up things that, like, I just don't want to get any overspray on, you know? That's kind of the whole purpose of masking. I hate to leave that box of plastic right here on this board, because that's my, well, step, the key to get to the outside of the truck. Uh, yeah, um, primer overspray is not as bad as clear overspray as far as how far it flies and whatnot but it does leave a mark you know gray overspray on stuff so we're just going to come in and do a little light tape down stick down on some stuff and uh roll with it you know what i mean it's a nice day in oklahoma about 47 billion degrees and it's only 10, like 9 o'clock in the morning. It's been an awesome summer, though. We've got a lot of stuff done. Made a few friends, shook a few hands even. Yeah, good times. So same thing as uh, typical deal, bare metal protection, Omni MP172, 175 catalyst. We're gonna just spray that on our bare metal areas. Actually spray it on the full panels of the hood and the roof. And then the door doesn't have too much bare metal. The cab corner doesn't have too much. I haven't waxed and greased that yet. Um, because this takes 20 minutes to incubate. So we're gonna give that that 20 minute incubation and then we'll go in there and we'll wipe everything down. Two to one ratio, not gonna need, uh, I don't know, we're gonna need quite a bit because we're covering a, a complete hood and a complete roof. So let's make us a full cup of this stuff. All right, so. Typical deal here. Spray it on wet, wipe it off while it's wet. I love these sprayers, man. All right, better move this out so we don't get a bunch of overspray. 
Dirt daubers are everywhere, homie. They're all over this place. Let's see if she'll start. There you go. 
took a, I think it's supposed to be like a mount you can clip onto a strap, zip tied it onto a PPS cup, bam, got us a point of view camera for the spray gun. Yeah. All right, so you can see the result there. And this is just my corrosion protection on this thing. I'm gonna come back and put high build primer over the top of this where the bodywork is, but I'm not gonna cover the whole thing with high build primer. There's no need to high build this whole hood when we just have bodywork here at the front and one little spot over on the other side. Um, same way with the roof. There's not much bodywork toward the front of the roof. It's all at the back. We will look over it, make sure there's no little hail dents or dings that are gonna show up. And uh, we'll just high build the areas we have to, but we're gonna wait till later on tonight because I put two coats of this on and it, like, it needs to dry for about 12 hours at 70 degrees. It's gonna be 100 degrees, so it'll only need to dry four hours, something like that. So there we go. All right, you guys need to leave me a comment. And let me let me know what you think of the uh, yeah the paint gun cam. I'm sure lots of other people have done it, but that was the first time I did that, so it was fun. Now we're gonna mix this up some high build primer. It has been about probably about five and a half hours since I sprayed that material. It is hotter than hell out here. Look up. Yeah, it says it's a hundred degrees inside of this shop right now. And uh, the old weatherman says the heat index is about 110. Whatever, it's hot. Put her on wet, they said. Just gonna spray these couple spots here. Here's something I've always wondered. I just sprayed that. Let's see what the temperature is of it. Uh, so metal temperature, 101.4. Right where I got done spraying, 99.1. It's just the solvent in there kind of cools stuff off a little bit. I've always wondered that. <laughs> when does it get too hot to paint, they said. August. Well, all right, there is uh, three coats of high build on a couple spots here. I'll hit these other places um, with uh, some other primer that I have, and that'll give us plenty of material to block and make sure our body work is good and straight. And then our C10 or our C10, our OBS truck will be ready to move on to the next stage. I'm waiting to get all the rust repair stuff for the bed right now. And uh, once I get that, we're back to cutting and welding and all that. But we wanted to get the cab and the front end all took care of. So there you go, guys. Hey, if you enjoy my content, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate everybody that's coming in and watching these videos. And guys, I'll, I'll include you all on the next episode of... Uh, what's happening at the hog shooter spot. So we will talk to you guys later. Try to stay cool in the middle of the summertime heat. This stuff, it'll be dry enough to sand in no time with as much uh, heat as we got going.
Catch you guys later.